Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Um, can you hear me fine on the back? Yeah. Yes? I will ask you if you have some question, please speak loud. I have some hearing difficulties. Sometimes I cannot uh, hear you very well, but otherwise somebody else can help me just to uh, translating what you said. Okay, this presentation is about time travel. Um, it's uh, based on different theories about uh, how we can do this movement in time, even to the past, to the future. And I'm going to be connecting with Billy Mayer material, with uh, specific time travel events that had happened to him. If you're not familiar with Billy Mayer material, I will give you the right information where to find more information, okay? So you will see the links, you will see the contact notes, so in order for you to investigate further. Okay, this is the a timeline. Uh, on the left is the past, on the right is the future. Let's suppose that I'm here. This is me, present time, in this point of time. Uh, but I am here making this presentation because a lot of things happen. You are here because a lot of things happened this morning. Probably yesterday, the year before, so it's not a coincidence that you are here. For some reason, events on the way the universe works, you are here now. So I'm here right now and because of many different things has happened in my past. One of them is my father. This is my father. His name is Jaime. My father here, uh, my father passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, he was 91 years old when he passed away. Uh, this photograph, uh, he was 55 years old. Uh, his name is Jaime. And um, because of him, I am here. He got married. I have, uh, we are four brothers, four sisters distributed around the world. So we are a big family. So I am one of those members. Thank you to my father. This is my grandfather. My grandfather, his name was, it was Felix. Felix was a very prestigious lawyer in South America, uh, but I never met him. I never met him, so I didn't have that opportunity. So let's suppose I want to meet my grandfather, because he seems to me a good guy. So let's suppose that I can just go back in time by a machine or something I can do at time travel, go back and meet my grandfather. Uh, when probably he was a teenager, and we become good friends. And I found that probably I love him so much because he's a great guy. Nice to meet you, grandfather. I'm here. Uh, probably I will not tell him anything about that. I am future traveler. Just meet the guy. But let's suppose, uh, just hypothetically, that for some reason my father died or I caused his death. Wow, an accident. I caused that. Not because I wanted, because I love my grandfather. So uh, his death because uh, for any accident or whatever, I caused his death. Wow, so what happened now? If my grandfather is dead when he's just a teenager, so that means my father will never burn because he will ne never be engaged, married with my grandmother, so my father will never burn. So that means I will never burn. So what happened to me? If I kill my grandfather by accident, I, is not, I am no longer here. I disappear. So I disappear in the future when I come back, or I disappear at this moment. If I kill my grandfather, I immediately I disappear. That's going to happen? I don't know. But if I disappear, or I never existed, how could I go back and kill my grandfather? If I never existed, I cannot go back and kill my grandfather. This is called the grandfather paradox. Uh, some people just based on that say it, said that the past cannot be modified. We cannot modify the past. The past is there, whatever happened, happens. If we go back in time, we cannot do anything about that. But there are a little, a very different points of view around that, so we will be talking about that. In the road to wisdom, 
you, everybody thinks, sorry, let me just, uh, just an interruption. Okay, I'm continuing. In the road to wisdom, we think that we will find all the answers. You are here because probably you have a lot of questions. What I can promise you is after this uh, presentation, we'll, you will have more questions. I will not be answering all your questions. The road of wisdom, even though there are a lot of answers, is full of questions, a lot of questions. If you have all the answers for everything, you are not wise. You are wise if you are learning every day something new. If you have more questions and you find more questions, you will be wiser every day. So be curious, is my recommendation. Look for more questions. So right now, I'm going to give you a lot of questions. One of them is, what is time? Have you think about that? What is time? Why sometimes just one minute lasts like an hour? Wow. This means I was counting the seconds, so it just lasted like an hour. But other times, one hour lasts like a minute. So what does it change in our mind? I remember uh, something that happened to me when I was around 11 years old. I was in my school bus, sitting on the right side of the window, and in an intersection, the bus crashed another car, another vehicle getting in front of the bus, the bus driver just stopped very hard, and we crashed with another car. When I remember what happened, in my mind, it looks in a slow motion. So the bus was stopping, the other car was crossing, crashing, the, the glass broken everywhere. I saw the other driver just jumping in his chair, and very surprised. I remember everything in a slow motion. Why does this happen? Why some events, we just record them in slow motion, and others just, we never record them. So it's the way our brain works. Our brain is capable of store information of the three-dimensional space with all the sensations that receive. So it's time, what is really time? It's an illusion. We are in a kind of a matrix, or is something that is real, why sometimes it's all relative. Can we see the future? Maybe some of you can see the future. Sometimes you have some dreams, something that is going to happen, and during the day you notice that something that you dream really happened. Maybe all of you have had deja vus. Have you ever had deja vus once in a while? Something that you see it and you say, oh, I remember that. It already happened. So why it is? So can we see the future? Maybe we can see it. Oh, why can we see the past? Uh, everything what we do probably is being recorded somehow in the universe. Uh, there is, a, for example, anecdotes of people looking at ghosts. Probably a ghost is just a projection of something that happened before. There is a famous photograph of a vehicle that shows a guy sitting in the back seat and he was a guy that died a long time ago. Why that information is stored somehow in the universe and is there? So maybe we can see the past, or maybe some of the ghosts are some kind of recorded information that is being stored somehow in some places. Uh, is it looking pressure? OK, welcome. Okay, so in some cases, uh, I, for example, hear about a story that somebody was watching a ghost, something that, an image, somebody doing something, but always doing the same thing. But there was a restoration in that house. That they put a lot of uh, wood on the middle part of the walls, from the middle part to the bottom, and they changed everything. But suddenly, that image that some people once in a while see from that ghost, was cut in, in, in the house. So they see only one part of the, of the information, but not the other part. For that ghost that was scaring a lot of people, right now was scaring more people because looking just half image, only half of that. 
So that's what ha happened. So probably what we see in some ghost cases are just fluidal forces or some kind of energy that we store or has been stored in some places that are just, we can see them. Just we can see something that had happened. The next question is, how can we travel in time? Can we go back in time? Is there any way to do it? Are we going to do it in the future? And if we do it, can we modify the past of the future? Like the grandfather anecdote, um, paradox. The grandfather paradox tells us that we cannot change the past. But what happens if we actually can do it? Is there evidence that we have already done that? And if time travel is possible, the obvious question is, where are all the time travel travelers? Let's suppose that in 100 years we found a way to travel in time. They should be here visiting us. So we will see a lot of time travels. That question is similar when we say if there is extraterrestrial life out there, where are all the ETs? They should be here around us. Okay, so it's very similar. Okay, so here you have more questions in your road to wisdom. I, as I promised you, I'm going to give you more questions. In time travel or thinking about time, my recommendation is don't try to solve everything. If you have a question, leave it there for a while. So one day you will be understanding that. It takes time and in with our three-dimensional brain, probably we cannot even get close to understand what time really is. Okay, so the presentation, what we are going to show you is in three parts. The first part is about what is time, probably is the longest part. The second part is how can we travel in time. And the third part is if we can modify it or not. We will be combining that, as I told you at the beginning, with some information from Billy Major case. So we will see actual situation time travel events that had happened with Billy Mayer and his extraterrestrial friends. And you can read more about that if you are interested in this. Uh, so we'll be talking about uh, predictions and prophecies, a very quick review of that one. We will see something that is very important, especially right now that there are a lot of earthquakes in different places. So we have seen the news. Uh, I think the last one was yesterday in Indonesia, 7 point something, very strong one. There was another one here in Quebec, 4.0. A lot of uh, small earthquakes in the San Francisco and, and Los Angeles area. So it's, maybe it's a good time to just look at back that information on the San Francisco earthquake. Uh, we'll be also talking about the role of, of a prophet uh, and see if the time is a fourth dimension. Let's consider that aspect of time. Can we try on travel? We'll be just touching the uh, theory of relativity, talking about wormholes, and how the beam chips or the spaceships that it is used for traveling can go back in time. How can we do it or how can, how can they go to the future? and also see practical examples, so we can read more about that. Also, if we can modify it, we will be talking about a theory that is very common uh, among the physicists and mathematics, mathematical, mathematics people. So, uh, so we'll be talking about that. And at the end, we'll be just looking at the one travel experience from Billy Major when he go, went back to when he go back to the 13th century. So that's what we are going to be covering today. Okay, so what do you think is time? Do you think your future is fixed? So you supposed to be here two days at this moment and was fixed, you didn't have another option? Or you have another option this morning? And you say, should I go or should I not go? So is the future like a fixed script? like a movie, like a straight line that just go from the present to the future, like a movie that I can just uh, turn a button and just move to different scenes and go back on, on time or go forward and see different aspects of the movie. Or on the contrary, 
the future or the events is something that is changing all the time. And I have different possibilities. This morning you decide to have some type of breakfast, you decide to come in one way, you decide to come to this meeting, yesterday you have some decisions, you decide to, go to get married, or probably not, you decide to go to another city to live, or taking a job. Every time we are taking decisions. Is perhaps the future like a white book, or a book with empty pages that we are writing every day? So in that case, we have different options. So it's not fixed. So you are not puppets of the destiny. So the first part is, is known as a prediction. The other part is known as a prophecy. A prediction is something that whatever we do, it doesn't matter, it's going to happen. Okay, so it's fixed, it's going to happen. Like for example, an earthquake. Probably it's not uh, today, not tomorrow. We don't know exactly, but that earthquake is going to happen. Like the San Francisco earthquake. It's going to happen and the scientists know that. They don't know when, but it's going to happen. In that sense, this is a prediction. A prophecy is something that we can change. Somebody could change the, his own destiny. So in Billy Mayer's case, you can find prophecies and predictions in his material. Um, one of the questions around that is, can we modify the future? If it's a prediction, we cannot modify it. We can think we cannot modify it because it's fixed. If it's a prophecy, for sure we can modify it because we are taking different decisions every day. So let's talk about something that happened uh, in 1978, March 1. Billy Mayer was um, at his property and Quetzal, an extraterrestrial friend of him, came to visit him. And Billy Mayer asked him if he is possible to do uh, time travel. He was curious, very curious, and he wants to go back to or go to the future to look at the future San Francisco earthquake. And Quetzal said, okay, why not? Just come with me. So they uh, get aboard uh, a spaceship and they travel on time to the future. When? We don't know. But they were there and they arrived a few minutes or a few hours after the earthquake. So it already happened. And they saw the destruction of the city. Billy Mayer was taking pictures of that destruction. How he, can, how he, he could do that? Because the uh, Pleiadian spaceship was equipped with a system that he can use his camera. And wherever he pointed out, he can just look at and take a picture. It was some kind of a specific device that was constructed for Billy to use his camera. Otherwise, he will not be able to take good pictures of that event. Uh, he took 11 pictures, and the investigators, Wendell Stevens and other investigators, uh, when they were visiting Billy, Billy showed them the pictures, put it on the table, and showed them. It's not only Wendell Stevens, it was other investigator, was people from that uh, FIU site or uh, Silver, Semjase Silver Star Center. That means the Billy Mayer place were there. One of them was Calliope, uh, Billy Mayer's wife, and other people around. And they were all just surprised by watching or looking at those pictures. So Wendell says that. Uh, he was int intrigued by the timing. So he was looking details on those pictures just to try to define when it's going to happen. Something that he gave us, uh, give, give him some idea. For example, if he could just look at a newspaper and see the date, would be great. But probably the photographs were taken from above, so it's difficult to do that. To, to do that. Something that Wendell said is that he was surprised to see the cars, the automobile, automobiles. Because he saw cars that he didn't know at this time, in the 1980s. Uh, this uh, type, the type of car that he described it is that the, the ceiling or the, uh, the top part of the car was made of glass. And that glass was in continuation, continue with the front glass. So it was a big cover of glass going from the front to the back, and also to the sides, there were also glass on the doors that just co-connected with that glass. 
And something else that he noticed is there were not external mirrors. He didn't see anything outside of the car. No, it's not external mirrors. And he just said, that's very strange car or very strange vehicle. It's exactly like this one. I just uh, have that uh, image. It's from an article uh, produced last year. It's a, um, a vehicle that said that will be available in 2019. This year is available. It's an electric vehicle, like a Tesla, but instead of uh, external mirror, some of the uh, car uh, manufacturers are already working on that. They are putting cameras, and it's much better, it's simpler. Because the cameras, you don't have to turn your head just to look up, right, left, just to see what's going on. You have everything in a single point with a view of all the cameras. And it's easier to control. So and you don't need those things, those mirrors just extending outside. So this is a Mitsubishi car. Uh, it is also autonomous. That's something that is going to be very common in the future. Just consider that because of global warming, that type of electric vehicles, vehicles will be more common. So that's probably what Wendell Stevens saw on the San Francisco earthquakes photographs. A lot of vehicles <coughs> like that. Uh, but right now we know that probably we're reaching the point that the San Francisco earthquake is going to happen, if this is what we see here. Okay, so what else he saw? Okay, this is a very interesting uh, drawing by Ludek Pesek. It was published on the EU magazine, September 1977. Uh, Ludek uh, made that illustration for that magazine, just considering at this time, 1977, uh, what gonna, how that uh, San Francisco earthquake will be. Wendell also saw these uh, drawings and he compared with what he saw on the photographs. Actually, the photographs are no longer available. What happened with them? Quetzal, the astronaut, the ET that took uh, Billy back, oh, sorry, in the future to look at the San Francisco earthquake, he told him, he told Billy, you were not authorized to show these pictures. They were for you. You should not you, you never should show those pictures to anybody. Just give me the pictures. So Billy gave the pictures to uh, Quetzal and he took them away. So right now the photographs are no longer available. The evidence that we have is just what the uh, testimony of people like Wendell Stevens and the people that were there. Ben, Wendell said that it's similar to this uh, drawing, but there are differences. For example, the triangular, this building, uh, he saw it that it was break in two parts, with a break going from the left to the top right, so broken on two parts. Also, he said that there was not so much destruction, not so many de de debris or, or um, destruction in this area. And if you compare this image with current uh, San Francisco uh, area, like this one, you will notice that there are much more buildings. For example, in front of this uh, Pan American, uh, is the name of this building, somebody remember? Tra Trans American, Pan American, something like that. Okay, this triangular building, you see here has uh, some building that has some extension that goes diagonal to the ground, so it's this one. But there is another one in the middle between this and this. If you look at the drawing, this is not ex doesn't exist here. The building in between these two buildings is not here. Why? Because at the time that uh, Ludek made this drawing, uh, it was not there. And also we may notice the way he did this drawing. Uh, Ludek did this drawing by using a lot of photographs taken from a helicopter. Probably one big photograph or several photographs. The way to do it is just, just take a lot of photographs, do a mosaic and put it on a table and do the composition and draw in the top of them. Keeping some details, like for example, the mountains, the trees, some vehicles that you see here in that area, 
for the vehicles here. Uh, so you keep most of the details, but some buildings you just delete one part and keep the other part. So that one, uh, or oh, an easy way to create this drawing. That's, this is how he did it. And you see, for example, this is a detail of the cars. You see, this is a photograph. Uh, so it shows us how he did that drawing. Uh, Ludek clearly was not trying to show a future, probably the case ahead, uh, San Francisco earthquake. He was not really doing that. What he did is just using the current photograph and uh, do some changes. So it's not possible that Millie Mayer could took pictures of this drawing because it's completely different what uh, Wendell Stevens saw. And you see information about that on the Wendell Stevens book called the Pleiadian, Pleiadian Message in the page 393. Here he explained that he was completely different. This is a, exactly the same magazine drawing. Uh, and here you see the vehicles that are there. So these are vehicles that are very were very common in the 70s and 80s. It's not, these are not the type of cars that Wendell saw. So what Wendell saw was something different. It's not exactly that like this drawing. So it's not possible that Billy could just took pictures of this magazine and use them to show the San Francisco earthquake. What he took was something else, something that is going to happen in San Francisco in the future. So that's quite very strange. A very curious detail, uh, you see the red color, let me go back. Do you see the fire, the red colors? Uh, if you notice that that red color looks that is not natural. It's not the same type of, or doesn't have the same type of, um, let's say, hue or color is very strong. So that is added to the drawing. Somebody was feeling very artistic uh, desire, so he was putting uh, the fire on that magazine for some reason. And you may notice here, for example, if you look at that photograph from the book, from the Geo magazine took by uh, Wendell Steven in his book, and another copy that is available on the internet, you see the red color here, 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 is not exactly the same structure that you see here. The guy that paint the red colors just to emphasize the fire, for some reason delete some details. Why he did it, I have no idea. But that's something that you will find in the internet, that red color is added to the pictures. Okay, so that's a very interesting uh, case. But well, this is a prediction. Why is a prediction? Because it's going to happen. What happened if, if one of the photographs uh, that Billy took you appears there? Is your face just in the middle of the street, probably scared about what had happened? but you are there, and you see that picture. Or you say, oh my God, I'm going to be in San Francisco during the earthquake. If somebody offered you to go to live to San Francisco, are you going to go there? Probably you say, no, I don't want to go there because there is going to be an earthquake and I don't want to be there for any reason. So in that case, you have the choice to be or not to be there. Right now, if everybody believes that this is very real prediction, Probably there will be a governmental, a United States governmental program to evacuate everybody outside of San Francisco before the earthquake, because they know that there's going to be a huge earthquake followed by a tsunami. They know it for sure. So they put air outside of that city and they just relocate everybody to another city. Does the prediction will not happen? No, the prediction will happen. The earthquake will happen but probably there will be some variations. So that is showing us that probably a prophecy and a prediction can come together. So it drives us to the next question. Okay, so what is the role of a prophet? Do you know a prophet? Have you heard about prophets? And any prophet you know? Well, Billy Mayer, anybody else? Nostradamus, maybe? Casey. Well, uh, uh, Casey, yes. Uh, right now, there are some people that are there that are doing some predictions. Uh, uh, starting every year, some people say, you oh, know, the world is going to end on May 13 next year. Uh, or 
you see, for example, in YouTube, there's a lot of that. Uh, please, uh, you, you can watch YouTube. You can just watch or see a lot of information from internet. Uh, but my recommendation is don't trust everything. Just be skeptical about everything because there is a lot of information that is just there because they want you to click and give them some money by clicking their video. So don't trust everything. So we know some profits, right? OK, just imagine you are a prophet. What happened with you? You are able to see your future. You are able to see what's going to happen, probably difficult situations that you are going to live in your future life. Are you going to let it happen, or you are going to avoid it? Is the role of a prophet just warning on about something that is going to happen, just for we do something that is not happening? Probably what, what many people think about that. Let's think a little bit more about the role of a prophet. So here I have a very interesting matrix. Uh, in that matrix, I put uh, what the people think in this column and what the prophet thinks uh, of his role. And here is if the prophecy is fulfilled. And here is if the prophecy was not fulfilled. So it never happened. So in the top left corner, if the prophecy fulfilled, the people say, oh, this is an excellent prophet. Exactly what he did is going to happen, really happen. Yeah, uh, the European Union was forcing the, the Russia to get mad and put in order to do an invasion to different places in north part of Europe and just invade also some western coast of Canada and Alaska and it just ended up with a huge uh, war. Uh, there were atomic bombs launched from one place to another one. China was in conflict with uh, Israel and destroyed completely and with China and put some kind of uh, biological uh, uh, bomb and destroyed everything. Oh, it happened exactly as uh, this prophet, Billy Mayer, said. What a great prophet because he was uh, just very accurate on what he said. If you're a prophet, imagine you're a prophet and you say something, what the people is going to say? Let's suppose that you see, oh, tomorrow is going to be a fire in some building. Don't go over there. And then the next day you see that there was a fire in that building. So you say, oh, my friend is a great prophet. Yeah, he was very accurate. But what happened, for the prophet thinks, he thinks that I am not a good prophet. The people are not learning. I, warned, I was warning them not to keep doing that what are they doing, to avoid a nuclear war or problems, but they, they are not learning. So I am not a good prophet. I am not fulfilling my role as a prophet. In other situation, the prophecy is not fulfilled. OK, there was not a nuclear bomb in that place. There was not a thermonuclear uh, third world war. There was not a, the destruction that uh, Billy prophesied. Uh, so nothing that he said really happened. So that prophet is very bad. He's not very good. What the prophet thinks? I am an excellent prophet because the people finally are learning. So you see the contradiction? It's very interesting. So the prophecy is there because it shouldn't be there. So something that is going to happen shouldn't be happening. So think about the prophet mind. So he is here not to say, I am a great prophet. What I said is going to happen, really happen. He doesn't want any fame. He doesn't want to be known as a very accurate on his prediction. If you see a prophet saying, it's going to have something on next year, and this year is happening, oh, it was great, and he felt proud that I was a good prophet. He's not a good prophet. The good prophets are the ones that doesn't care about what the people said. And that's something that I like about Billy Mayer. Billy Mayer doesn't care about that, what they say. The purpose as a prophet is not to avoid to us to well, live difficult situations. This is not his, his purpose. The real purpose is to help us to learn so we don't need to live difficult situations. So if they bring spiritual teachings, they bring something that changes our way of mind, this is a real prophet. This is the core of a prophet. The core of a prophet is not telling about the future, and just be, be careful with that. 
just do everything that is not happening. This is not his purpose. The real purpose is just to change the way we live, the way we behave. So if a prophet is, doesn't care about what the people said, he just told about things that is going to happen, but his main focus is on helping us to be a better human beings by uh, spiritual teachings or how to live the everyday life. So this is a real prophet. So the real prophets are there, hiding somewhere, but they don't want to be famous. So that's why I think Billy Mayer is exactly a good prophet, because of that. OK, uh, if you want to learn more about prophecies and predictions, I just uh, guide you to look at this material. Michael Horn is an expert on that. You will see a lot of information from him. He's following a lot of predictions, if they were fulfilled or not. He has a good and excellent documentaries. Uh, one of them is at the time fulfills. You may see there are 100 predictions. And something that he said that's going to happen, it really happened. Another interesting uh, video that you can see is the silent, silent revolution of truth. Both of them are available in YouTube. You can go there and watch them. If you are new in the Billy Major material, just go to the silent revolution of truth at the beginning. It showed a lot of information from that case. So that's very interesting that you can be, uh, keep looking at that. So that's something that you can look at. All right? Uh, OK. Any questions so far before I move forward about the prophets, prediction, prophecies? Yes, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I can hardly hear you. Sorry, what, 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 what's the question? Okay, any other questions? Normally, they are uh, uh, negative, yes. They're, they're showing the difficult situation. But in general, if you think about the time, and if you can see the, the future, you can see positive situations or negative situations. But uh, probably what it makes more sense is think, uh, to see something that is uh, negative and something that we need to avoid, and think what should we do as a human being to avoid that situation. Any other questions? OK. OK, let's move on. Um, OK, so uh, let's talk about a little bit about time. Go back to see what is time. Is time a four dimension? Uh, you know what is one dimension? One dimension is one line. Let's say from left to right, this is one dimension. Another two dimension, the second dimension is probably from the front to the back, so par perpendicular to this one. So you have a plane. A plane is in two dimensions. And the third dimension is going from, bottom, from uh, the bottom to the top, so up and down. So you have the third dimension. So you have a three-dimensional space. So that's what we 
could understand or can we understand with our brain a three-dimensional figure? Because we see it, we move around, and we are used to work with three-dimensional figures, so we see that they have some volume, right? Okay, so what do you think that there is a fourth dimension? Where is that fourth dimension? Because if uh, left to right, front to back, and up, down, the fourth dimension, where it is? Just think about a fourth dimension. What happens if time is the fourth dimension? So can we imagine that time as a fourth dimension? I mean, uh, if you have a spaceship and you want to travel on the universe, and you set up your, the console of your spaceship, and you select the place where you want to go, for example, Alpha Centauri, probably Proxima Centauri, that is the nearest star to the sun, and you set up the coordinates, but you have to also to select the time. Do you want to arrive there right now, or in three years, or in 1,000 years, or a million years ago? So you can select also time. This is the four dimensions. Okay, to understand that, if the time is a parameter or is a four dimension, I'm gonna show you an example of a parameter. Parameter is something that if you change it, you see different stages. For example, a parameter, if you are looking at a movie, uh, one parameter would be the number of the SN. SN number one, SN number two, SN number three, or the timeline, uh, one hour and 32 seconds, uh, th one hour and 32 minutes, so you just set up one hour and 32 minutes and you see the manifestation at this parameter. So let, to give you an example, this is a parameter. This is Leo, four months old. Let's change the parameter. This is Leo, 10 months old. So it's the same person, the same guy, but it's just a different age. Leo, nine years old. I changed the parameter, now Leo on 16 years old, and 23 years old, 44 years old. It's the same guy, but we are different parameter. We are changing that. So we are changing the time, so it's the guy that is transforming. So you say, okay, uh, show me Leo, uh, nine years old, that's it. Just change uh, the dial and you say, you'll see different parameters. So this is a parameter. Some scientists said that uh, time could not be a four dimension. If we cannot move in time, it's a parameter. A dimension is something that you can uh, move in that dimension, in that directions. So if we are able to travel in time, so time becomes a fourth dimension. Okay, in order to understand all that, I'm gonna give you an analogy. Because our three-dimensional brain cannot think on a fourth dimension, so I'm gonna just put you on the level of a two-dimensional being, just looking the third dimension. So in this three-dimensional space, let's suppose I have uh, four beautiful people. The first one is called Sven, this band has a very nice uh, shape. It's uh, very sym symmetrical. Uh, let me introduce you Connie. Connie is a nice lady with a nice form. The fourth person that I'm going to introduce you is Kurt. It's uh, another type of manifestation of shape. And the last one is Donna. It's like a toroidal figure. So these four guys are three-dimensional people. But let's suppose that we cut that one in with a plane, horizontal plane. So we have different snapshots, different personalities that change on the time. So in one case, uh, when you cut horizontally, you see that in one moment of time, Kurt looks like a square, Connie looks like an ellipsoid, Sven logically looks like a circle, and Donna, quite interesting. We see two Donnas. Wow, that means the same guy could be on the same place at the same time? That, imagine that you have a time machine. In five years, somebody just developed that, a friend of yours, and invite you to his home. Oh, I developed this time machine. Do you want to travel? Oh, yes, yes, tell me to. When do you want to go? Okay, let's go back a few years to meet myself. 
So you can go back on time and you just uh, appear in front of you. Probably you will be scared to see yourself because you yourself coming from the future in front of you will be scary. But you will have two manifestations of the same person at the same time. Oh, that's quite interesting. So we can have probably this two snapshots of the same person at some point of time. That's a possibility. So these are the, the guys uh, that I am introduced to you. These are two dimensional people. They are living a uh, experience in this two dimensional space, but this is a temporal experience. Uh, in order for them to uh, understand the, what is going around, I'm going to put them some brains. With that brain, they can record everything. They can see everything. But that brain is a flat brain. It's not a three-dimensional brain. So that flat brain can think only in two dimensions, not in three dimensions. So it's not possible to teach, for example, Sven, what is the third dimension, because his brain is flat. If his brain is flat, he can only uh, understand flat surfaces, not a three-dimensional space. So this is a, uh, just a, a specific moment. So imagine that the, what you see around, the people that you see around, is just a snapshot. Think, some, think about somebody that you don't like. Oh, that guy, I, I don't like that guy. Think about that. This is just a personality that you see at this moment. Now think about somebody that you really like it so much, somebody very special in your life. This is another personality. So what we see are a snapshots of human beings. What we see is different manifestation of the same being. So these three-dimensional spheres are the real person, but what we see in this life is just a snapshot. So every time you see a human being, or an animal, or a plant, just imagine that what you are seeing at this moment is just a snapshot. It's not what that person really is. We will be able to see how that human being is going to be in the future, how that human being is going to be in the future lives, how human, this human being has been in previous lives, all his evolution will be have a good idea of what he or she really is. So imagine that, that the personality that you see in other people is not reality. It's just a snapshot, a little information. But just imagine that probably he's been living some experience before and who will be living more experience before. If we are able to understand that fourth dimension that is time, we will be able to understand the greatness of the human beings. The human beings are very special. If we see all the evolutions. Just think about that person that you don't like it. Imagine what, how, how that person is going to be in the future. The experience that he will be living. He will be more evolved. He will be more wise. So he will be somebody very, very special. So if we are able to see that, we will be able to see the real person. So that uh, analogy uh, helps us to understand a little bit about what is time. Time is just uh, is not an illusion, probably it's a fourth dimension that we are not able to fully understand with our brain. All right, and now let's talk about if we can travel in time. Okay, how can we travel in time? How do you think we can do it? Do we know a way to travel in time right now? In about science can say, okay, that's a way to do it. Have somebody done a train travel? You know some, somebody? Yes, okay, we look at, for example, there are different ways to travel in time, probably a projection, so look at on the, on the future, or probably moving on time. Okay. Um, and you see in internet, um, on YouTube, a lot of videos of people that are time travelers. Um, a video of a, a lady just using a cellular phone in an um, old movie, but she was talking in a cellular phone. Some guy just with a uh, camera and glasses and, and teacher uh, in the middle of people, but it looks like it's not from this time. A guy from Russia, I guess, was in Ukraine that just uh, was taking pictures, took a picture of a UFO, and just appeared some uh, years 
uh, in the future and then disappear and go back and they move to the future and send pictures of the future, uh, one future city of uh, Russia. Maybe all of that is, is fake. If you look at that, you, you find some clues that show you that they are not real. Or maybe some of them are real. We don't know. Okay? So can we travel in time? Actually, there is one way that we can travel in time. And uh, we have done with the current science. Um, according to Einstein theory, if we have two twins, let's say uh, Peter and George. Peter and George are twins. And one of them is astronaut, an astronaut and is going to go into a spaceship to do a travel on the universe. Uh, and the other one is going to stay on Earth. But Peter just go into his spaceship and did a travel that just lasts probably one or two years, flying close to the speed of light. When he come back to Earth, uh, on Earth will be probably 30 years, has passed 30 years. In his clock, on board of his spaceship, is only two years. When he come back, it's 30 years. That is something that is being proved by uh, astronauts. Actually, the astronauts has put some clocks on the spaceships, uh, on the space station, and they synchronize two different clocks, watch, and they notice that the one that is traveling all the time, when they come back to Earth, they notice that uh, there is a difference. A tiny fraction of a second, so it's a difference. So that is, is being proved that is happening. So in that case, you can think that uh, Peter made a time travel to the future 30 years later. So in that way, if he just only by traveling on close to the speed of light, he can do a time travel to the future. Maybe right now you can just jump into a spaceship, just move close to the speed of light, and then come back. Probably here has passed 50 years, but for you, it could be only five minutes. So in five minutes, you did a 50 years time travel to the future. That's one way to do it. Yes, so it is possible to do a time travel to the future. Another way is something that the scientists uh, has, been, uh, has in theory, but they have not evidence yet of their existence, are the wormholes. Um, like the black holes that was uh, a theory that was postulated uh, several decades ago, uh, but right now there is evidence that the black hole exists. There are actually photographs of black holes that are available for the scientists. The wormhole is like the black holes, but instead of going down and not, never return, you go to another part of the universe. So this is the universe in a three-dimensional space that is curved, but here we show it like a two-dimensional surface, but it's curved. So instead of flying at the speed of light that takes a lot of time from going from one place to another, you can go through a shortcut and do that time in faster. So in that way, you can connect from one place to the universe to another place of the universe. So you are doing a time travel because you are arriving at a different time. Uh, so can some spaceship do some changes or create a wormhole and just transfer to another a part of the space-time. That's something that the uh, spaceships, the UFOs, that Billy Major has been taking photos of them, and he's been aboard of some of them. That's something that could be done. Uh, Guido Musgrover explained how it's been done. He explained that, uh, that what is quite interesting. Actually, the universe, you know, is expanding. Have you heard about the expansion of the universe after the Big Bang? So the universe, every second, is bigger. So right now, our <laughs> atoms is uh, ex uh, expanding. One, the distance between them are increasing slowly. But maybe just a little tiny fraction, so we are not aware of that. But everything in the universe is expanding. So that means the speed of light that is a constant probably is not constant on time. In the future, it's going to be different than it is right now. So it gives some kind of uh, signature or uh, trace of uh, where in the, when in the universe you are at some point of time. 
So what Guido explained is that this chip, because they have a tachyon drive, this is using tachyon particles, they can be set up on a frequency that match exactly the frequency of a future time. So let's say, uh, for example, uh, the tachyon vibration at this time, let's say, is 100, to put some number. But in 1,000 years, it's going to be 112. Instead of 100, it will be 112. So you are here, and you change the tachyon drive, and you put the frequency in 112, and just uh, fill your spaceship with these tachyon molecules or whatever. And you do that travel through this hyperspace, you arrive on, on the future. OK? So that's the way that he explained. It's some kind of confusing, you know? Uh, it's not very clear. As I told you, I'm going to give you more questions than answers. But that's the way that he's explaining that this is happening. Uh, is there evidence of uh, time travels? OK, there are, OK. To travel in time, there are different ways to do it. Uh, actually, in Billy Bayer material, you find there are three ways to travel through the times. The first one is called the visualization. This is what we explain. You just look at the future events. The second one will be the projection. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. And the third one is materialization. So these three type of uh, three possibilities to travel in time. Visualization. Visualization is that you can see future events, or you can see past events without traveling. Actually, this is not a traveling. This is one way to take a, a photograph or look at something that is going to happen in the future. In the contact report 680 that was uh, done on May 7, 2017, just two years ago, uh, Billy Mayer and Pat are talking about a device that he has. The extraterrestrial at this moment, at this moment, they have a device that was uh, given to them for another extraterrestrial race. But the Pleiadians has a device that they can see the future events on Earth with 41 days in advance. You can read that contact report and you can see the explanations. So they were, they are right now watching future events that is happening on Earth. In, for example, in 30 days, in one month, there's going to be a volcanic eruption. They will see it in that device. I imagine it's like a big screen that they, they can focus different places on Earth, and they see the future. So they know in advance things that are going to happen. And they have some kind of monitoring teams. Uh, some people, as I understand, they're monitoring key events. Doesn't mean that they're going to be interfering in everything. They are not going to be here just to solve in our problems. But at least they are watching future events. So you can read that contact report. Uh, the projection is a one way to travel in time. Actually, Billy Mayer described on this uh, very interesting contact report, uh, 142, uh, he gives some explanation about time travel. The projection is, says that is the way that we, as human beings, are going to learn first is the most natural way to travel in time. Projection means that we, by natural ways or doing very simple device, we will be in the future, be able to travel to future or to the past. But in that way, we will be traveling in a different dimension. We will be in a dimension that if we are right there, nobody will see us. Let's suppose that we have a time machine, like the Orson Welles time machines on the time machine movie. So you sit there, and you just set up the date, and you go and travel to the future or to the past. When you arrive, you cannot interact with everybody. Nobody will see you. You will be like a ghost observing things. You will be invisible, but you will be there watching everything. So in that sense, you cannot change the, the, the future. You cannot change the past. You will be an observer. And this is, he said that this is the most natural way and the first w way that we will learn on how to travel to the future. Because we arrive in a, in a level of, con of consciousness and materialization that we are not able to interact with them. 
In that sense, and this type of traveling, we are not able to change events. But there's another way that really explains that it requires a higher level of technology. We will not know it for several centuries. Uh, is that we can materialize ourselves there with the use of technology, but also requires some kind of conscious level. So it requires that the people that are doing that have some different conscious level, because in order to do that, it requires a different setting of the time and space. Uh, read the contact 142, and that's very interesting. I explain a lot of that. Uh, what is very curious, if you read all of that, you say, what? What is here? I, I don't really understand what all that he's saying. But at the end, Billy said, oh, that's very simple to understand. And Sam Jassy said, yes, it's very simple. But the human beings are not really capable already to understand that, the concept of time. But very, it's very interesting to read it. I just uh, invite you to read that one. Uh, examples of materialization, you can look at the time travel to France or to the 13th century. I'm going to talk about that now. Uh, at the end of this uh, uh, presentation, they traveled back to meet M. Emmanuel. Emmanuel was uh, a prophet that lived uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, some people call it today Jesus Christ, but his real name was Emmanuel. Uh, just talking about that is going to take us probably two hours, so this is a very long presentation. Another one is the contact report 0, uh, 39 that St. Joseph did uh, travel with uh, Billy and Pat, and they were back in time, and they were looking at the dinosaurs, and they were taking pictures of dinosaurs. And Billy was ha 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 carrying a, a gun. Quite funny, imagine Billy uh, there with the dinosaurs and with uh, just a pistol or something like that. But uh, Sam just said, just helping, just to just freezing the, some dinosaurs for a moment, because he was able to take pictures of the, of the dinosaurs. And also in the future, something that is very curious is that he says um, he went to the future and he saw uh, colonies on the moon. And he said that in the future we will be have some kind of beam ships, very simple spaceship like uh, flying saucers that we can use it, very primitive ones, but we will be able to see it. Uh, in YouTube you'll find a very interesting video done by Randall Winters. Randall Winter was one of the first people that were interested in Billy Major case. In one of those videos, he shows some photographs that Billy showed him as he's presenting. One of them is very curious one, shows a spaceship with the NASA NASA logo on, the, on one of the sides in front of Mars, flying in front of Mars. Randall Winter's interpretation was there. Well, you see? NASA has some spaceships that right now are in Mars. It's not possible because NASA doesn't have that technology yet. What I think is that what we saw was a photograph of a future event. Most probably Billy Mayer was there, took a photograph and captured a future NASA spacecraft flying on the top of Mars. You will see it on one of those videos from Randall Winters in YouTube. So there are different options. You can see here different possibilities. You can read them on different uh, contact reports. This is for your own investigation. Uh, OK, so the last part of this presentation, if we can modify it. We have already talked about that, uh, the way that maybe we cannot modify, we can move on, uh, on, time, uh, on the time. Uh, probably to pass events, future events, uh, just be there as an observer, but we are not able to modify anything. Or are we able to do it? It's like a river. Are we, are we able to change the course of a river? So instead of going there, go to another place? So let's talk about that. OK, uh, remember the paradox of uh, the grandfather paradox? Let's talk about something very interesting. OK, remember that if I went back to time, I can kill my grandfather, my grandfather. So I will never burn. Let's suppose that I actually can do it. And I kill my grandfather accidentally, as I told you. Some scientists say that it's a possibility that I create a, a diversion, so another time uh, line. So I create another, let's say, universe or dimension where 
my grandfather doesn't exist and I do not exist. I am somewhere else, but I'm not there in that universe. In that sense, we can do multiple uh, changes. So this is like a network, like a, a branches that are just all connected. So in some of the possibilities, I am here and I am here because I just burned, but I did some changes in my life. So there's another me here or here. So that's the way what uh, the scientists explain that and they give that the name of multiverses. So scientists mathematically have demonstrated that there is a possibility that multiverse exists. I mean, the same universe that we have here, but in another dimension, in another space-time configuration, but not this one. But it, it gives a very interesting explanation, yeah, and I explained the grandfather paradox, but give us a lot of questions. So we start to think, oh, what is this? So it means that I can be living in one uh, of those universes where I'm not conscious for the other one, why just one? Because my conscious only give me the uh, information of my current life, not other parallel universe. So it gives us a lot of complications. So instead of uh, uh, showing out one answer, it is uh, presenting us more questions. So that's what is called multiverse. But what happens if, uh, for example, to do some changes, uh, let's say in one of those parts you have a decision, I get, should be get married with that uh, other person, or I should not be uh, married with that other person. But there's two possibilities. So Billy described that the time is something that has some milestones in the evolution. In this milestone, something could change. For example, uh, during the United States elections, uh, when the people at the United States decide to uh, select uh, between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, it was a big diversion. What would happen right now if Hillary Clinton had won the election? What was the United States president? Probably the destiny of humanity right now would be completely different. That's correct. So if that is changing, uh, it was a very mild, very important milestone. There are other small milestones that doesn't make any change. For example, this morning, what did you have for breakfast? Probably you decide, okay, should I have a beef for having for breakfast uh, fruits or two eggs with uh, bacon? So it's a decision that is not going to change anything. Probably do your digestion, but it's not going to change your destiny. So there are some of those selections are doing big changes in our future, but other changes are not. So in some cases, probably we're very close to ourselves with little divergence. Okay, but can the past we modify it? Is there evidence that the past is modified? What happened if we have already made some changes and we don't know it? It's something that probably we have changed, somehow happened, and I don't know, I'm not really aware of that. Okay, let me show you an example of that. Billy Mayer traveling to France in the 13th century. That's a very interesting story. Uh, there is a contact report about that. It's a, one of the asked uh, explanations, and you will find it on the Future of Mankind website. Uh, very interesting to read it. Uh, okay, uh, the people involved on that um, event, it was Billy Mayer, where Billy Mayer asked, asked is an extraterrestrial lady that come from a parallel universe that was with Billy on his first early years. Jitschi, uh, Jitschi is a guy that is from Russia. Uh, he was some kind of wild guy that was very curious, but somehow he was, was involved there. He doesn't have to be there, but he was involved there. And G. Shelley, G. Shelley was a, a pastor, a kind of a religious person, but also a scientist that was recognized in France. So let's uh, look at that story. Um, Asket and Billy Mayer were in at the Jordan Desert um, with their spaceship, and they were there, and they met Yitchi. Yitchi is the Russian guy 
and he um, was talking with them uh, the two days before, and he know uh, he knew Asket or he met Asket, and he was very curious about them. So he just approached to the place that they were camping, and Yichin noticed that there was a spaceship floating above the ground. So Yichin was with his gun and just approaching that and saw that beam ship flowing on the sky. So he just uh, do a couple of shots onto the air just to wake up uh, Asket and Billy that were there. They heard them, they heard him, and they went down and talked with him. And he just uh, had a very interesting conversation with them. And for some reason, Asket found that Yichi uh, was very curious and invite him to get um, on board on his spaceship. He just uh, very, is very curious why some, a lady that comes from a very high level of evolution in his spaceship invites somebody like Jitsi. Jitsi uh, he was carrying a gun and with a lot of equipment. In some of his equipment that he has, it has a battery and some kind of little transformer that elevate the the voltage of the battery, and um, a lot of wires. So he used it to sleep at the desert, because on the desert he could have a very dangerous animal that came, came to his place when he was living at night. So in order to protect himself, so she just create your, uh, put your cam, and just surround with a lot of a little poles, and put the wire around him, and he connect the electrical system so if any animal just get closer and touch the, the, the wire, he just get electrified and just run away. It's a system that many people use today just to have the cattle just in one place. Okay? But he has it. Well, he has that, all of that in his back. So Asket invite him to go there and he say, what, why not? Let's go to the spaceship. So they beam him up to the spaceship. Uh, no, uh, of course, he was really scared about that. <laughs> when he just arrived to the spaceship there, he was really quiet. He was really scared. So, but he decided to go there. Uh, reading the contact, that contact report is very interesting because the conversation between Billy and Jichi is, is quite interesting. Jichi is some kind of religious person that thinks about the Bible, Jesus Christ, the God, and everything. But Billy, you know, Billy is uh, quite a uh, personality on that. So that conversation between them is very interesting to, to look at that. OK, so he just went up. And the Asked with the bain, uh, spaceship, her main ship, just go very high on the atmosphere and put the, the controls and just do, did a jump to on a space of time and arrived to the 13th centuries. So she went back on time. And she go down again to France and land on the ground. On the ground, Asket with Billy and Yichi uh, just land in a place in France, somewhere in France. Uh, Billy saying that he was really uh, amazed how the air was filling with more oxygen. He said that the air was so very fresh, so he liked it so much. The blue of the sky was very deep, a very different blue of the sky. So he said, oh, oh be, uh, during the time we have been lost a lot of oxygen in our atmosphere, we have lost a lot of beauty of the, of the nature. Everything looks greener. Uh, the birds, that he said, well, were singing very loud. A lot of birds everywhere. So he was saying, oh, it looks like the paradise. Great place, very nice. So, OK, uh, Asket gave uh, Billy and Yichi a device that they put, like the one that I have here, with a translator. Uh, the way it works, I'm not really sure, but what I understand if I put it, they can translate words in her ears. So that's the way they could talk with Yichi, that they speak French. He didn't speak Russian, so not uh, German, and not the Asket language, but that's the way that they did it. And they went to uh, meet, uh, meet uh, Yicheli. So Yicheli was a priest that was living in that area. Uh, Gicelli uh, was uh, receiving visit from Asket probably one or two times before. So Gicelli already knew that lady that come from the star. So Gicelli, a very smart guy, living in a little cabin on the mountains, 
once in a while she received a visit from a lady that come from the space so on the 13th centuries. And Shelley was very curious about something that Billy has with him. It was his latern. How he was watching them. As a scientist, he was asking him how it works. Billy explained him how it works. And also, Yichi showed him the battery and all the equipment. And he was uh, in very good rapport with him. So he decided to let him uh, use that one. So Yichi gave, uh, excuse me, Yichi gave Yichi his battery, his transformer, the wires, and explained him how it works. Quite interesting. And they went, went back to the present time. So they continued their travels, and they left uh, Yishelli with all this equipment. So something very interesting is that you can find, well, uh, Yishelli uh, was using that device just to use it for put the cattle per away or uh, visitors that were not very well re received or very welcome on, at his home. So he was using that. But what you see is very interesting in that kind of document. For example, that book, Fantastic Past. This is a, one a copy of the book in German, page 97 and 98. It's by Robert Charux. He talks about very different things about Gicelli. Gicelli has a, a lamp that he put on his window and was never burned up. So he, he's, uh, that, uh, the author of this book is just suggesting that Michelli somehow discover electricity in advance. So he knew how it works because he has some uh, lantern that never extinguished, was uh, put it on, on his uh, window, uh, and some people were scared about that. And they considered like a magician. Also, Michelli has a device that he put on his uh, cabin that if he noticed that somebody that he didn't want to talk with, so disconnect the battery, and if the guy that is coming to the front door and touch the knocking uh, thing, the metallic part, get electrified. So just they feel that electricity and they just go away. And this is explaining here that is happening. So if somebody is talking the iron uh, door knocker, so they will be feeling that electricity. So this is all documented in a book. That is quite interesting. I show you know, that uh, probably the past could be modified. Maybe it's already been modified. And it's uh, in, in some books so you can read it, things that are happening, probably from time travel uh, events that are happening. That's a quite interesting story. You can read it on this contact report. I think it's part three of Ask It uh, Contact Notes. Okay, uh, just to if I finalize this presentation, I'm going to leave you with uh, uh, some thought about what is time. So what time really is? Is time something, uh, is that a fourth dimension? Something that, that, or is something else? So something that I think time it is, uh, time is a natural law, like gravitation. Just imagine gravitation is a law that is, is part of the universe itself. Gravitation it just tells us that uh, uh, objects that have mass or attract each other and also create some perturbation around that create a gravitational field around uh, each object that has mass. So this is a law, but time is a law. And we know this law with a different name. We already know that law of time. And that name is cause and effect law. So time is the same cause and effect law. But in the cause and effect tell us that something that is happening produces an effect. So time is exactly that. Show us something that is evolving. It's part of the universe itself. It helps the universe to evolve. We as a human beings, we live under that law. We need to live under that law. Probably in the future, and several lives away from now, we will be more evolved, and we are not subject to that law. So that means that we will not live in on time, in that timeline. We will be aware of the future and past events all together in the single present. So we'll be just looking at other beings like they really are. Remember the, the different snapshots. So we'll see the greatness of the human beings. Imagine the greatness of all the beings on the universe. 
the greatness of the universe itself. So when that law is not affecting us anymore, probably will be in a different level and we don't need to be subject by the cause and effect law. Okay, thank you so much. That's my presentation.